And if one horse isn't enough, in this next story, there's lots more of them, all dressed up and ready to perform. They're the cast of El Caballo Blanco, and they're in town for your dancing pleasure. Adrienne Francis produced this story. I'm Katerina Gasso, I'm 14 years old, and I'm a rider on the show. I like working with horses, they're pretty funny, they all have different characters. For instance, we have like our crazy horses who are just like biting and loving people, and then we have our grumpy ones who are just like not so much grumpy, they just like staying to themselves. Ready? Yep. Everybody loves to ride him, but not everybody can. Wow. He weighs over 800 kilos. Good. Lovely, beautiful. Well done. My name is René Gasser and I'm a sixth generation horse trainer. So it's been in the family a long time and hopefully my kids will continue with that as well. El Caballo Blanco means just the white horse, but it's just about the Spanish horses, their history, the training we do with them and just uh, their beauty. To get that young horse to first see it before you purchase it or breed it and then to get it to the stages um, and then finally break out with some of the movements and then some quirky things a horse will do, you know, to perform. It's that, that's the, the beauty of it. And the reaction of the audience. Actually, the first time that I actually recorded this time is two and a half thousand years ago, so it's a long time, long history. It mostly was for, for warfare, but now, then at the end, it started more for parades because the weaponry got so powerful, so the horses were a li little bit more obsolete, so they used them more for parade. So they used those movements to show off in front of the, you know, the crowds when the soldiers would come along. The generals would be sitting on these beautiful animals and be doing the Spanish walk, where the horse actually walks like a soldier with its legs up like that. Then some of the more powerful movements would be the capriole, where the horse actually stands on its back legs, jumps up in the air, and kicks out all four legs. And that was mostly done if the soldiers would be surrounded by the, uh, by the other soldiers, the one on the horse could actually put its horse up in the air and kick out and, you know, do quite a bit of damage. Ah, boy. One of the movements is called the piaf, where the horse actually trots on the spot. And that was developed for, to heat up the horses. So if you can imagine being freezing cold, we can camp by you would. <laughs> so they would have to warm up the horses. They couldn't just run them around because it would alert the enemy. So they actually taught them to trot on the spot. Uh, it's now you can actually see the, uh, the Olympic Games. They do the piaf, they do the passage, they do all those movements. We sometimes work for 15,000 people. So that the, the hype of the, of the audience, the lights, the music can be too much for some animals. But we do take them along first. We try it out, plus they've got to be able to travel. So it does take a special horse to make it. No, no, lie down. Lie down. Lie down. Behind. No, lie down. Oh, yeah. That's my boy. <laughs> the touching of the horse and the movement is nearly always the same, but I think it's you have to be uh, Dare I say, a bit of a politician, you know, to, <laughs> to get him to, to do things. Force doesn't work. I'm not saying you don't have to be strong, because we're talking about stallions. Uh, you know, a stallion is an alpha animal, so you can't be a pushover. You have to be there and stand your ground. If you think, if there wasn't people like us working with horses, people in sport working with horses, there would be no horses. You know, we'd probably be eating them or something. <laughs> and, and that's the thing. I'm, I'm all for protecting animals in, in a hall, but if we wouldn't be using the animals, they'd probably be instinct already. I wish some people would treat other people like the way we treat our animals. All our boys are pretty much, they're, they're well cared for, they're overly spoiled, actually. They're all chubby and they're like playing with their toys and they go out in the paddocks when we can. We've actually got a paddock out here right now that we're putting them out each day. They're pretty good. They're not stressed out or anything. They override us more than we ride them. They, um, they're pretty pushy. They're pretty bossy. <laughs> yeah, they, they're more the boss than we are. We are looking into actually putting horses in theatre. Not actually talking, but yes, acting. Um, being involved more with dancers, to actually dance together with the dancers and the musicians and, and the storylines. Not in an arena production, actually on stage. In the States or in Paris or hopefully in Australia. Lots of lights and like lots of backdrops, like 
big costumes, like different sort of costume for the horses and gear. My wife always tells me to stop thinking with that sort of stuff because it costs too much. <laughs> but definitely, look, I, I think it's one of those things you always want to go further, you always want to do the next thing, you know, to, to make the show better. And I suppose if it was just a business, you'd have to think about it. But it's not just the business, it's, it's your life, it's your blood, it's the next generation, my kids are going to go on with it, so and hopefully their kids will do the same thing. Actually, when we go to our holiday after the season, we're going to Spain to look at some horses. <laughs> and that performance is at the AIS Arena on Sunday afternoon.